I can't believe this guy wants to put his jet on a charter. Oh, shoot. Hey guys, what's up? It's Tom, and on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of putting your private jet on charter. Check it out. Don't forget to stick around to the end where I tell you my personal opinion on what I would do if I owned a private jet. So earlier this week, I got a phone call from a guy that was looking to buy a citation, and he told me that he got a proposal from, let's just say, a large charter company across the United States saying, hey, if you buy this jet, we can guarantee you cash flow, and you'll also have the advantage of having a private jet for your own travel, and of course, the tax write-off. So in talking with this guy, we found out there are a few really good pros, but also a couple really bad cons when it comes to putting your jet on a charter. Number one, when it comes to the charter company making a proposal to you, usually there's some fine print. Let's go over some of the pros. Pro number one, offsetting your maintenance costs, or at least it seems like it. So of course, running your jet isn't cheap. So charter companies have access to larger maintenance facilities that allow you to get a break when it comes to the cost of maintaining your aircraft. Number two, your aircraft actually gets used. These aircraft need to fly. If it doesn't fly, then chances are things will break or just kind of fall apart. These things were made to be in the air. Benefit number three, depending on the charter agreement, you might have access to other airplanes, not just the one that you buy. So maybe you buy a lighter jet, but now you get access to the larger jet fleet and you can experience different types of private travel. On the flip side, if you buy a bigger jet, but you have a business meeting that only requires a lighter jet, you can actually save some money by taking a smaller jet that's in the fleet. So for all these reasons and more, it actually might be a good idea to put your plane on a charter certificate. The most important thing is to read the fine print. All right, let's talk about the cons. Well, number one, hidden fees. When it comes to an estimate or a proposal that a charter company is gonna make for you to put your aircraft on charter, there's usually some hidden fees and it's not necessarily a nefarious uh, practice, but rather things come up. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen and you're gonna be on the hook to maintain your aircraft. So you may see a positive ROI on the spreadsheet, but if you have a large maintenance uh, bill for one reason or another, then that ROI can quickly diminish. Number two, upfront acquisition costs. You see, you're fronting the money to purchase a two, three million dollar asset and in that case, you're fronting the money. If the market turns, you could still be paying the price for the, the higher market as the market kind of goes down and your ROI, again, is gonna be diminishing. Number three, trust. You're handing over a two, three million dollar asset to people that hopefully you trust, but not only the people that are maintaining it, but what about their customers? I mean, you've got Karens, you've got babies, you've got pets. All these people that you don't know, all these strangers are gonna be flying in your aircraft. How does that make you feel? Number four is gonna be depreciation. See, as the plane is flown, if it's flown a lot so that you get more money, don't forget, you get more money the more the plane flies. Well, that's putting hours on the engine, it's putting hours on the airframe, it's putting more butts in the seats. They're gonna produce wear and tear and diminish the overall value when you go to resell. So again, read the fine print, see how depreciation is gonna play into it versus the ROI that you're getting by renting it out. There's a lot more cons when it comes to charter, but there's so many different charter operations and different ways to do charter that I love to kind of talk to you individually and see what you're considering to help you out. And let's not forget, what plane are you going to be renting out? See, a charter company might want you to buy a bigger body jet, but your missions are mostly local and you just gotta get from point A to point B. So how do you choose the right jet, not just what the charter company wants you to buy? All right, so what would I do if it was my family? So I think about it this way. If this is gonna be your first jet, I would start out smaller. See, with the large body jets, not only are you dependent upon larger missions, but you're also dependent on customers that don't mind higher gas prices like they are right now because it's gonna cost more to run those aircraft. So you need a customer base that not only wants to get from point A to point B, but wants to get to point A to point B in style, in a larger cabin, in a larger feel. So you have to check on the customer base to see if it's gonna be flying and don't be the owner that buys the charter companies their first big body jet or their first light jet because they don't have the data to support whether or not 
they're going to be able to um, sustain those missions. So I would get started with a light jet. I would take a look at a light jet that gets people from point A to point B because I believe that's going to be your primary, the largest, the largest niche in the market is people who want to get from point A to point B. You know, the, bar, the larger body jets are great if point A and point B are across the country. But if it's mostly local flights, the lighter jets are going to be more fuel efficient. They're going to be easier to maintain. They're also going to be at a lower acquisition cost. And you can still get a really good one on programs that's re charter ready at a competitive price point. So start there. If you and the charter company decide, wow, this is making a ton of money, well, great. Then you can either keep it there and cash flow it and then upgrade if your mission changes. Or, you know, best scenario is that you buy another one and you use it and you cash flow the other one and everyone's happy all around. Worst case scenario, the light jet doesn't have the revenue you're looking for and you go to resell it. I believe the light jets are gonna have a stronger time in the market, especially right now in second quarter of 2022, as fuel prices continue to rise. Um, the demand for lighter jets is gonna maintain while the demand for the larger jets may uh, start to decrease. All right, so there's a lot that goes into considering putting your plane on charter or not. Find me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. I'll be there creating more content for you to help you buy and sell that jet and live that jet life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let's go full throttle on that like button. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and comment below. What do you think the best jet is for charter company? Hope to hear from you soon.